What's up guys, Lou here, back with another video, and today we're checking out something that I think is quite interesting. This is the ASUS PadPhone X, which is a smartphone as well as a tablet. And then if you add the mobile dock, it's also like a little netbook, so a very versatile device. And the phone itself has flagship specifications, kind of an all-in-one, jack-of-all-trades type of device. Let's open this up and take a closer look at the PadPhone X. Now this is the AT&T version. It is sold, I believe, exclusively on AT&T right now. And you can pick it up for 199 bucks on contract. So a pretty good value if you think about it. With the flagship specifications, you're kind of getting a tablet as well as a smartphone. Not kind of, you are getting a tablet as well as a smartphone, although the phone is the tablet, so on and so forth, you guys. Catch my drift. Now we're not gonna read through too much of this. Instead, we're gonna look at the actual product. So this is the docking portion. You see, dock the phone to activate the pad phone station. You have your volume rockers over here, power switch. I'm just gonna take this plastic off right now. One thing I like right off the bat without looking any further is the forward facing speakers. You don't see that on every single tablet and that is obviously a, a welcome addition because you're gonna get a lot better audio quality having speakers facing you instead of away from you. Forward facing camera as well. As I flip it over, you'll notice the section for the actual phone to dock, the pad phone. The connector is at the bottom here. Of course, we've got to grab the phone in order to utilize that. So I'm gonna place this to the side for a moment. Underneath we have the actual phone, and you can see, of course, texting and driving, it can wait. Pull this off. Wireless charging and NFC built in. That's always cool. So there we have it. The Pad Phone X, the actual phone portion. Pretty comfortable to hold. Not the tiniest bezel in the world, but a pretty nice, sturdy feeling phone. It is plastic on the back but a, a kind of soft touch plastic. Over here we have the rear facing 13 megapixel camera. There's a speaker here as well as a flash. A micro USB down on the bottom. You've got your power switch in this convenient location where your thumb would normally live, as well as your volume rocker in that location. On the top is where you'll find your headphone jack, a microphone, another microphone at the bottom of course. And of course this is what's gonna dock into the tablet portion, I'll show you that in a moment. But first, we're just gonna check out the remaining items in the box. A headset, we have a micro USB charge cable. You can charge up the tablet or the phone using micro USB. Uh, that's important because the tablet has its own independent battery and it will charge up the phone. So I believe it's 4,000 plus milliamp hours in the tablet, so even carrying it around as an extra source of power for your phone, uh, or if you're going on a long trip or something like that, it's kind of a, a convenient way of making sure that your main communication device always has power. Here is the USB power brick, and then the last little portion here is just warranty card, and some important notes. I believe that is everything. Yes, that is definitely everything. Let's get some more room and have some fun, folks. This form factor has actually been around a little while, this idea of pairing a phone and a tablet into one seamless device. But it's the first time that it's making a big splash here in the North American market, where you can actually pick it up subsidized through AT&T for uh, a similar cost to a regular flagship device. So let's go ahead and dock this. I'll show you guys how this fits in. Very conveniently slides down, friction fit, and then there's a click at the bottom. Now when the device is powered on, you also get a vibration to let you know that you have connected it correctly. And it's not gonna fall out either, so you can see here if I shake it a little bit, it's in there in a sturdy enough fashion that it won't fall out, but if you do want to remove it, it also will come out fairly easily with just a little bit of a push. So anyways, that's how it fits in. Um, now we'll check out the ergonomics with the phone insert. It's not, you know what? It's not as heavy as I expected it to be. 
with the phone inserted. Of course, there's a bulge on the back, but you don't really hold it there anyways. You hold it in this location here. Now, it does have a large bezel, and I've seen some people complaining about that, but from, from my perspective, you need a place to put your thumbs anyways on a tablet. Unlike a phone, which you hold in one hand and the bezel is just getting in the way, on a tablet, you know, you've got two hands on it, you've got two thumbs, so a little bit of, of a bezel is not such a huge deal. Anyways, just going around this device, I don't think we did yet, you've got volume, which is remapped over here to your left hand. You've got uh, micro USB, as I said before, to charge the internal battery on the tablet portion. Your power switch is up in this location right here. Now, the camera will continue to function uh, from the phone even when using the tablet. So if you launch the camera app from the tablet, you'll essentially be using this camera here and this flash, etc. The speakers, of course, you won't be using this speaker. Why would you want to? So anyways, I mentioned I have a couple of other devices over here, not devices, but accessories to go with the Padphone X. So we might as well look at those before I power this device up. First, we have this right here, the Padphone X mobile dock. It has a trackpad built in, of course, a full keyboard. It's also gonna be a friction fit, so there's no like uh, magnetic or mechanical clasp. It just sort of fits in there and uses Bluetooth. The positive side of that is that you can use it when it's not attached. So if you wanna have your tablet resting somewhere else and this on your lap to type, this also has a built-in battery, but it's not going to be like extra battery power for your device because you've already got the extra battery backup of the tablet. Instead, uh, this is gonna be battery power just for the Bluetooth control of the keyboard. And it is rechargeable via micro USB as well. You're gonna get a lot of battery life since it's a fairly basic functionality. This is plastic, but it's got like a little brushed feel to it. Actually, pretty weighty. Let me go ahead here and just give it a quick test. So, you know, it basically functions as you'd expect, just like, you know, any other keyboard. It's obviously not huge, but functional. And if this becomes your main device, your main travel device, this could be a great way to get through a bunch of emails without having to tap on the screen. Uh, that tactile feedback is always a positive when you're doing a lot of typing. Of course, you could also close the device down and turn it into a netbook, sort of. So one device for everything, at least that's the concept. Let me go ahead and fit this in real quick. So anyways, there you have it. That's, that's sort of your form factor you're gonna be looking at. And as I mentioned, you can set it to a number of different angles. Even at the most open angle, it's not completely top heavy where it's gonna flip over. You have enough weight in the dock to keep it sitting in this setting right here. And of course you can close it down completely like this and then you end up with this kind of package. Your use case scenario can dictate how you're gonna travel with and how you're gonna use all of these different components. The other benefit here is that you can answer phone calls right on this device. So if you've got an incoming phone call through the uh, application manager, the software that's built right in to deal with this particular functionality, you can answer that phone call locally and have a ton of battery life to back up your phone. Again, this is all about finding one communication device to carry with you and not have to worry about multiple devices. Okay, so there we go. We are completely booted up right now. So you can see here you're running Android 4.4.2. And when you insert this into the tablet, let me just open this up real quick. When we insert this into the tablet, that's when the magic happens. Watch this. Slide this down. I get a nice little buzz and booyah we have tablet action happening right now. And just like that, instantaneously, you've taken your experience to a larger platform. So you'll see here, you have the Padphone Assistant, and this is where things get really interesting on this device. You can pick a specific charging setting. You have intelligent mode, which manages the battery power requirements of the Padphone, right? You have the phone preferred mode, which uh, the pad phone station will always supply power to the pad phone, so it will con consistently be providing power from its battery to the phone. And then you have the power pack mode, which when you are outdoors and the pad phone is running out of battery, the pad phone station can be used as a charging pack. So anyways, uh, a couple of different modes here for dealing with power consumption on your main device and the tablet. Intelligent mode is going to do its best job to balance the power between both devices. So you've also got this setting for incoming calls where you can 
select to retrieve an answer, you can simply remove the phone portion from the pad phone and answer calls as you normally would. You can also answer calls directly here on the tablet or you can have it so that you need to remove the pad phone and click answer call. Not sure why you'd want that, but that's another option. Of course, there's also answering mode. So if you've got a Bluetooth headset, you can set that as your preferred. Of course, if you have this large device here and you don't have a Bluetooth headset, you could use the speaker phone as well to answer that phone call. So a number of specific options that are ha handled by this pad phone assistant widget that ASUS has built into this device. Obviously not a stock Android kind of thing, but you need some special handling for a device that is so unique. The screen is 1920 by 1200, and the screen on the phone is 1920 by 1080, so relatively high resolution on both of the devices. Of course, you're gonna get a bigger picture on the tablet, so if you're doing extensive reading or something like that, it's probably going to be a little bit more comfortable. So there are a couple other accessories to go with the Pad Phone X besides the dock and keyboard. There's also this folio bundle over here. So there is a case for the tablet as well as the phone. Let me just get this open real quick. And you probably have seen these before. They're similar to the covers that you can get on the Samsung Galaxy products or, you know, something like an iPad, smart cover, etc. So this one will fit onto the tablet, folds up here, does an origami style back so you can use it as a stand. And you can see you have the cutout on the back so that you can still dock your phone. Actually, let's go ahead and just install this real quick. So this will protect the front, but something cool here as well, it leaves the speaker ports open. So if you wanna to listen to music or something, you're still gonna have access to those speakers even while you're protecting the front. And then on the back, you can see you still have access to the phone for removal, etc. Now, if we put the case on the phone, something cool here happens as well. You will need to remove the back. The battery is not removable, unfortunately, but that's not that uncommon on these modern devices. And over here you have your SIM card slot as well as a micro SD slot for expanding the storage of the device. It doesn't work like a smart cover in the sense that it won't unlock the device, see? So you, you know, you're still locking the device here but it just acts as a protective shell, protective barrier. And if you want to dock the device, like so, you can actually still do it, and it will sort of sit flat, relatively flat, if you still want to use the tablet and not be too annoyed, although I would probably find that annoying myself. Now, I'm not a huge case guy on phones anyways, so I'll probably use this without this special back, but it's there as an accessory if people are a little bit more rough with their phones than I am. So I'm gonna go ahead and just reinstall the standard back. Now one really cool side effect of going with a combination like this is the fact that you only need one data plan. So if you've got a data plan for your smartphone, then you're pretty much covered on your tablet. Uh, of course, you'll be using the built-in connection on the phone when plugged into this device right here. So that's a, a value proposition on top of the traditional setup in which you would have data for your tablet and your phone. This is probably an interesting device for individuals who want a tablet and a phone and don't want to spend a bunch of money or just want a more seamless approach to both of those devices. You have all your information on your phone and now you have a slightly bigger screen when you want it to behave more like a tablet. Uh, of course, with these kinds of combinations, there are definitely compromises. In this particular case, like I said, the form factor is a little bit bulky comparative to some of the other tablets on the market. Of course, that's necessary in order to allow for this transformation to take place where you can stick a phone into the back of it. Like that right there, check that out. <laughs> I think it's cool. I've been a fan of technology my whole life, so anytime I see these new form factors or attempts at new form factors, it gets me excited. I'm not sure if this is going to be the killer device that you know millions and millions of people go out and purchase, but I do think for the right kind of person, this could be 
a very interesting solution. So there you have it, my unboxing and overview of the Padphone X from ASUS, a very interesting device and unique. I love looking at unique devices. If you guys enjoyed this content, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions about this device or other things that you've seen on the channel, the best way to get in touch with me is on Twitter. I am at Unbox Therapy. I'll put a link down in the description so you can talk to me there and ask me questions because I'm sure I'll find out a lot more about this thing as I continue to play with it. After all, this was simply an unboxing and overview. And that, of course, is what Unbox Therapy is famous for. Initial reactions to awesome products. Uh, hopefully awesome products. <laughs> all right, guys, that wraps up this video. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I will catch you on the next episode. Later, guys.